all of his goodness and mercy. Father God, we thank you. We thank you, Father God, because there is no other like you. Father God, we thank you because you made us, Father God. Father God, we thank you because you have supplied us not only with what we need, but Father God, you have supplied us with so many riches. So many, Father God, that we just don't know how to say thank you. Father God, I know that if we had 10,000 tongues, Father God, Oh, yes, Father God, we say thank you. Father God, we know that we know that we know we are living in tumultuous times, Father God. But the one thing that we do know, Father God, is that you are there and that you have never left us, Father God. Father God, we ask that you supply the needs for the sick and shut in, Father God. Father God, we ask that you that you just touch, rule, and heal those who are suffering, Father God. Father God, we ask that you touch, rule, and heal those who are homeless, Father God. Father God, we ask that you touch, rule, and heal the hungry, Father God. Father God, we ask that those who are going through some things right now, Father God, that you just touch them, Father God, and let them know that it's going to be all right. Father God, don't let the holidays, Father God, get to them. Father God, hold them tight because you know that we know that during the holidays, it's rough for some of us. We've lost loved ones during the holidays. We, 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 we're not making the money that we want to make, Father God. Father God, we have to learn and, and, and let people understand that the holidays have absolutely nothing to do with going to the mall, but everything to do with the love of you in life. Father God, we thank you just because you woke us up this morning. Father God, I ask that you touch, rule, and heal everyone who is suffering in this world, Father God. We ask these many blessings, Father God, in your Son, Jesus' name. And in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, and amen. You know, today, I want to talk a little bit about Conflict. And, and what made me, I want to talk about conflict simply because I see so many people that are single. And I feel like sometimes you're single for a reason. So today I wanted to just touch base on conflict. Especially in, in relationships and in marriage. I think that we have to do a lot better than what we do. I think that we need to do a lot better in the name of Jesus. So handling conflict in marriage and relationships. And you see, it, it's because of the fallen nature of man. The conflicts in relationships are a fact of life, you see. And even for believers in Christ, you see, loving communication doesn't come naturally or easily to anyone. For unbelievers, remedy for conflicts is difficult because without Christ, humans do not have the capacity for unselfish love. If you don't believe me, it's right there in Ephesians 4, 22 through 32. It says, put, to put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life, and is corrupt through deceitful desires and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds and to put on the new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. 
Christians, however, you see, have the Bible for instructions in relationships. Applying biblical principles to relationships will enable us to handle conflict most effectively. And I'm not just talking about relationships. I'm talking about friendships. I'm talking about marriage. I'm talking about work relationship. I'm talking about relationships in terms of being able to talk to one another. You see, the first and most important principle in resolving conflict in relationships, especially in marriage, is to love one another as Christ has loved us. It's right there, John 13, 34, it says, and God gave himself for us, you see. And in Ephesians 5, 21 and 30, it describes relationships within families, you see. We are, we are to submit to one another in love and to put the needs of others ahead of our own. You see, this is especially true in marriage and in relationships but where the husband is to love his wife as Christ loved the church and care for her as he cares for his own body. In turn, a wife is to submit to her husband and respect him. You see, I know some of us have a hard problem with that in, in, in the 21st century. I'm going to tell you why. Because, see, y'all not used to a man opening your door. You're not used to a man holding a hand across the street anymore. You're not used to a man being a man. You're not used to a man saying, let me get that door for you. I'm supposed to walk into the, to the door first. Let me get that bag for you. You see, now you got these attitude women. And I'm not going to talk about everybody because all y'all ain't like that. See, now you got to get your mind right. I can open my own door. I don't need you to turn no key for me. I can start my own engine. I don't need you to hold on breath for me. What, what is the problem if that's what the Bible says to do? That's what the Bible says to do. So when you meet a man that is giving and loving and caring and kind and wants to live by God's word, y'all got a problem with it because you think it's an ulterior motive. Something else is going on because he's too nice. And you wonder Y'all going to hate me after the day. You wonder why some of our brothers go to another race of people, not just white people, any race of people. Sometimes you have to check yourself. I know you're not going to like me after the day. It's all right because I love you. It's all right. I'm just saying what God loves. You have to learn to submit and respect just as just as the man has to submit and respect you see you see this would be would, would, would seem to be a, a fairly simple directive except for the natural tendency of humans to be reactive in relationship i said reactive reactive rather than proactive you see wives are usually eager to submit to husbands who love them as Christ loved the church and husbands are usually more than willing to love to love wives who respect and submit to them therein lies the problem you see each is waiting for the other to make the first move but God's commands for husbands and wives are not conditional you see, submission is not contingent upon love and love is not contingent upon respect. Hello. Taking the first step in obedience, regardless of the actions of the other, goes a long way to breaking down the conflict and establishing new patterns of behavior. You see, you see with that in mind, when conflict arises, the first step is self-examination don't believe me second corinthians 13 and 5 examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith test yourselves or do you not realize this about yourselves that jesus christ is in you unless indeed you fail to meet the test you see, after we have brought our concerns to the Lord and been honest with ourselves about our own failures or selfish desires, then we can approach others with our concerns. Furthermore, God designed believers to meet each other's needs peacefully. Peacefully. In Colossians 3.15, it says that, and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body and be thankful. You see, we all need grace for our own mistakes, and we must have grace for others who communi when communicating our needs and concerns. You see, communicating truth in love is the key to being he heard, because only when we communicate to others their value in our eyes will they be able to accept hard truths, you see. 
People who feel attacked and criticized will only become defensive and at that point communication inevitably breaks down you see conversely you see people who feel we care about them and want good things for them will trust us to communicate with them in love and concern for their welfare so speaking the truth in love is absolutely essential for conflict resolution you see this is particularly true in marriage and in relationships long-term relationships you see where continuous close contact with the spouse or loved one who has disappointed us often brings out the worst in us you see hurt feelings produce harsh words which in turn produce more hurt feelings you see practicing the discipline of thinking carefully and praying before we speak can break this vicious cycle you see you see godly communication can be put in simple terms by remembering to treat others the way we want to be treated you see god said blessed are the peacemakers and that is always the goal for christians you see there are many aspects of relationships and conflict and communication and the bible is full of wisdom for godly living you see I can go on and on and on and on. I'm going to just give you a couple, though, so make sure you write them down. You see, to resolve conflict, we got to be at peace with one another. We got to love one another. We have to build up one another. We have to be of the same in mind toward one another. We have to give preference to one another. We have to greet one another. We have to esteem others as better than yourself. You have to serve one another, receive one another, be devoted to one another, rejoice or weep with one another, admonish one another, care for one another, show tolerance toward one another, be kind and forgiving to one another, submit to one another comfort one another encourage one another be compassionate with one another pray for one another confess your faults to one another accept one another to solve conflict we must not let's not be proud against each other let's not judge one another let's not lie to one another let's not be partial with one another let's not provoke or envy one another let us not lust after one another let us not hate one another let us not take one another to court and let us not use each other may god continue to bless you And may God continue to keep you. And always remember, don't let some fool determine your destiny. Don't let that happen. Because when you do, you've given them the upper hand. I want you guys to have a great week. I want you guys to remain prayerful and loving and thankful that you have what you have. It may not be everything that you want, but you most certainly have what you need this Thanksgiving week. And may God continue to use you in every aspect of positive living. Be blessed. We are about to speak blessings into your life. Death and life are in the power of the tongue so we've come to tell you tonight be blessed in fact just look at three people around you tell them be blessed be blessed be blessed ah. bishop i was on an airplane on my way to see you and the lord said these words are your gift to the waters. Be blessed, my brother. Be blessed, my sister. Be blessed wherever this life leads you. Let me encourage you. Let me speak life.